I just finished taking a deposition this morning of the president of Chrysler Corporation, Mr. Jim Press. And this afternoon at around 2 o'clock, I'm taking the deposition of the chairman and CEO of Chrysler, uh, Bob Nardelli. We're, we're deeply troubled on behalf of all of the 789 dealers who in the middle of the night just two weeks ago, after some having served Chrysler for 50 and 60 years, received letters of rejection in the context of a bankruptcy reorganization without any advance notice. Uh, we, we're deeply troubled over the fact that we feel that there have been a denial of constitutional due process rights in that Chrysler has orchestrated the execution of 25% of its dealers, only giving them two business days notice to appear in court and object to the sale of Chrysler to the new Chrysler, which is controlled by Fiat. We have been trying as best we can to fight this. It's, it's going to be a difficult project. Uh, frankly, we feel that it is the consumers out there, the customers of Chrysler and the customers of just about any business run by small entrepreneurial talent in this country that is under attack. Tomorrow is the hearing where Chrysler is seeking the approval of the transfer of its assets instead of transferring assets including 3,100 dealers they're seeking to only transfer the dealerships of 2,400 dealers. So they're going to leave the 800 dealers behind. The purpose of tomorrow's hearing is to file an objection and introduce testimony to suggest that that business plan is not in the best interest of Chrysler. For the moment, forget about the dealers. It's not in the best interest of Chrysler. There is no way in this economy that they are going to recapture the sales that are going to be lost by 25% of their customers. Even in good times, that would be impossible to do. In the worst industry in 40 or 50 years, it's not even existent. So the, fa the fact is that the Obama task force has come up with a business plan that is ill-conceived. In our opinion, it doesn't pass muster, and when we ask questions of the executives of Chrysler as to how they could possibly find any wisdom in this plan, essentially they just shrugged. So in our opinion, it's not a Chrysler-driven policy, but rather a policy that is being promoted by this task force. After taking the deposition of Jim Press, it became fairly clear to us that Chrysler itself does not see the wisdom of terminating 25% of its customers. So far in the depositions, each executive of Chrysler has admitted that the only source of revenue for Chrysler Corporation are the sale of vehicles to its dealers. The elimination of 25% of its dealers in the worst automotive economy in almost 50 years makes no sense. Each and every question we've posed to these executives is, is why. Why would you do it in the worst economic climate in the automotive business ever? Why would you rid yourself of 25% of your customers? And quite frankly, it became abundantly clear to us that it really wasn't Chrysler's decision. They are under apparently under enormous pressure from the U.S the President's Automotive Task Force. Why do they want to get rid of so many dealers? It's an attack, obviously, on small business entrepreneurship in this country. Uh, we think they want to model themselves after the import network of dealerships. Toyota, Nissan, and Honda each have about 1,200 dealers. Chrysler has over 3,000 dealers. General Motors has over 6,000 dealers. So based upon the success of Toyota, the assumption is that less dealers is better. The problem we have with that is the free enterprise system is not run by the government. It's run by business entrepreneurs. It's run by capitalism. The dealers themselves will decide if it's not productive to go forward. The dealers, who some of who have been in business for 50 and 60 years here behind me, will decide whether it makes sense for them to go forward, not the U.S. government. Today, the government decides that it's inappropriate for the backbone of this nation, which is the, heart, the heartland where Dodge dealers are located, where people buy pickups. We stand in Manhattan today, but it's really the people out in the heartland that have to be concerned. Today it's the elimination of entrepreneurial automobile dealers. What is the next task force? Shoe stores, pizzerias, are there too many nurses? Are there too many teachers in this country? When is the government going to realize that capitalism works if the industry is that bad and there are not enough automotive buyers to support Chrysler dealers, then they will sell their businesses. That's their right. 
The state statutes protect automobile dealers. Under the, under the fabric of the Chapter 11 structure, the government is trying to take advantage of small business people. So the auto dealers are not seeking sympathy from the public simply because they're auto dealers. They're seeking support from the consumers because it's auto dealers today and it may be your profession tomorrow. Chrysler has essentially acknowledged that their hands are tied. The government has got too much of a stake in its destiny. The president of Chrysler came from Toyota. He acknowledges that the Toyota network has a smaller dealer body and obviously someone in the task force is deciding to play car czar. No one on the task force has retail experience. No one on the task force has ever run a car dealership. No one on the task force has ever run a business whatsoever. So the idea after 50 and 60 years, and in some cases more, that someone is going to step up, someone who wasn't even born when many of these people were in business and started their businesses. Many of these businesses are three and four generations old. And the idea that on two business days notice, the heartland of America can be attacked when the Obama administration talked about bringing Main Street back alive. Well, that's not what's happening tomorrow. Tomorrow in bankruptcy court, Chrysler is seeking to sell its assets to new Chrysler without these 789 dealers. We've made a case in the deposition so far that that would be devastating, not only for the dealers behind me, but for all of the communities across this country that depend upon the success of these small businesses. So the 50,000 jobs that will be lost if these 789 dealers are allowed to go out will grow exponentially by virtue of the vendors, the advertisers, and the consumers that rely on these small businesses. So we need the support of the community to speak out to their representatives, their congressmen, their senators. We're starting to get some overwhelming support. Unfortunately, the way this was orchestrated, we only had about a week to find representation for 789 dealers and assemble an attack. We are not really able to do it in such short notice to go against a Fortune 500 company. It's, this is a grassroots initiative where people across the country will hopefully speak out, not on behalf of these dealers, but on behalf of their small business owners across this country who might be next to be at the wrong end of the sword of a task force similar to this task force.